Welcome to Craft, Community of Raw Arts by the Female Tribe. Bienvenidas. Inspire is Craft's podcast section. We raise awareness about contemporary female artists and cultural facilitators. We spread the word regarding their current and future projects. Inspire is a sacred space to empower the female tribe. Women like you, like me, like all of us. Thank you so much for being here, for being our guest. I would like you to introduce yourself, if that's all right, so we can get to know you a little bit better. My name is Maya. I'm 35. Right now, I live in Marbella. Um, I've been here about five years. I'm mostly a creative person, um, not necessarily that I do one thing I do many things and I like that about myself I have many facets my greatest challenge as a person is to direct my energy and stay focused on one thing long enough to see it through but I really enjoy being like a spider with many different things going on in my web so yeah that's me and um my kind of work name I guess is tiger medicine And that's a big part of my identity as well. I'm very um, proud to be walking next to a tiger. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Maya is a kind of piece of heaven, a committed soul. This interview and having a conversation with her are gifts to us. A precious opportunity to hear from a great person who is on the way to improvement. Maya showed us how the voice could be a beautiful tool to join daily life and make it deeply moving. She has become an inspiration for the craft sisterhood. I'm just gonna throw a few words at you and see how they feel. Um, the first one would be artist. The second one would be creator. The third one is entrepreneur, and the last concept is 21st century woman. How do you relate to these? Okay, so artist, I guess for me, is, is a concept of taking yourself out of the norm, you know, and, and really being like an observer of things and a channel for things. So it's also like... Mm, a strong idea of like almost like a license like artistic license you know there's like a liberty with being an artist um a creator is somebody who lives to create i think it comes with a certain level of necessity It gets something that you have to do. <laughs> um, you can't stop it happening. It has to happen through you, you know. Um, and a creator is somebody who sees a need, you know, and works to fill that need. I think that that's a big part of being a creator, right? It's like an artist is just making you know for for the the beauty of making art and a creator is somehow filling a need um an entrepreneur well that's where like the art and the creativity combines into making it a sustainable life you know beautiful um because an entrepreneur is a 
available for like if we go back in the day then a creator or, or like an artist would have you know the person um what's the word who would like fund them you know mm -hmm. and um we don't necessarily have that today so you have to kind of stand on your own and there's not these wealthy people who are just looking for random artists there's so many artists so the entrepreneurial is like how do I sustain myself mm -hmm. through my work and um and I think that combining that with being a creator then then you're creating ways of sustaining income um or creating income for others or, or you know generating that um ability to to fund the projects you know so that's an entrepreneur for me and the 21st century women I had a really hard time relating to the word woman when I was growing up. I didn't really have good role models, I think. And I feel like a big shift is happening now with us as women. Mm -hmm. um, What kind of shift? Oh, definitely, like, you know, the whole patriarchy is collapsing. And a big part of that is not to vilify men, but to, as women, realize that we have to step up. You know, it's not about asking the men to step down. It's about stepping up ourselves, you know, and seeing our part in it and how we as mothers and sisters and, and wives and girlfriends and, you know, daughters can help the men in our life to to find their way too, you know. And I think that um, we are more aware than men generally just because we have all these connections in us whereas men are very <laughs> single point focused so in that like which women is not have... necessarily a bad thing they're oh, just no. different ways of approaching it's much easier for men to meditate us. for men to focus and do a task like i said like for me i'm also doing so many things you yeah. know and for men it's easier to like pick one thing and stick with it and um absolutely i think that that you know for women to come out of their homes what's happening now and realizing that like work and family is not enough for us we need the sisterhood we need coming together and and instead of being told by the patriarchy that women can't be friends and that we just bitch about each other like 21st century women are realizing like sisterhood you know we're only going to be able to be creative entrepreneurs if we demand the same rights as men and and have the same balls to ask for the money that we want you know and whatever it is we want but in this line of entrepreneurship it's it's money and respect right so how do you get that well you have to step up so and i think like we're we're stepping up you know i like that you bring up sisterhood because that's a very convenient topic as well that uh, yeah absolutely we invited you here um because you're involved in different projects and We would like to hear a little bit more about your most recent project. Um, if you could please tell us about your podcast. Yeah, so I started a podcast because I was listening to podcasts mostly from America mm -hmm. and talking with like these big name people about being super successful and American sized everything and I've sold a million books and you know, whatever. And I found it quite stressful to be honest, all this like talk about super greatness and, you know, like being these massive success stories. And I felt like it was alienating me to hear these kind of talks all the time by these great, great, great people. And it made me feel like I was never in the right place. Okay. And interesting. through that realization, I decided that I didn't want to feel so alienated from the place I was and I wanted to create a way for people who live here where I am to hear the voices of people who are here where they are who are doing work that has equal merit but it's not American sized you know um, because there are these people and I feel like a lot of us who are in this vibration because we're in the minority you know um, sometimes when you're out in the real world doing the work, you can feel very alone in that work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, um, like myself, you know, we, we want to shine light. Um, but it's nice to know that there's other lights out there. And when we're talking about sisterhood, um, 
I tend to spell when I write to my sisters with an A, like sister, <laughs> you know. Um, and I really feel like that's that's the feeling, that, like in this darkness that like the world is as well, like during the night times, there's many stars, you know, and um, to connect them a little bit and to... So I talk to people who have interesting life stories and mm. they're not necessarily yogis, but in my way of defining yogis, most of these people are whatever they practice. It's, it's yoga in some form and yoga in the sense of coming to your real self and meeting your real self. So the name of the podcast is Light on Living. Light on Living. Light on Living. And you can find it on any like iTunes or Spotify or wherever. Just, just look that up, Light on Living. And um, the inspiration for that came from my first yoga guru, BKS Iyengar, whose book Light on Yoga was like the yoga Bible for, for a lot of us. And um, because I didn't want to like alienate people who don't classify themselves through the word of yoga okay I didn't want to have the yoga in there and then I thought well living you know because <laughs> some of us are really living and some of us are just walking around dying you know a little bit so it, it really depends on how you want to look at it um so yeah that was my idea and it's you know a work in progress so I'm improving all the time <laughs> and I'm learning more about you know, how to do the editing well and also like the ambience for the recording. So I've learned a lot about sound quality and about... Important. <laughs> yes, and, and about like what people are actually interested in and what resonates with people. But it's amazing like, you know, the feedback that I'm getting from people, like not just like little things like, oh, I'd really like changed my day or I was having a rough week or, you know, like this is really life-changing stuff sometimes for people to hear these people who are all over you know and that's the realization I want people to have as well that like you might feel like you're the only one being a bit woo being a bit weird having these spiritual experiences because we don't talk about them often like most conversations are you know quite superficial and to really enable people to join me in that because I as a person have always found myself being a mirror to people for deep conversations and people share with me in a very vulnerable way and I've always had that and then when I realized that's not something that everybody experiences on a daily basis it's quite rare <laughs> so I thought okay how can I possibly share this with people and uh, what I like about the podcast is there's no video so I always feel like it's much more intimate because you're not being filmed as you speak. So it's mm -hmm. just your voice and you can relax and you can record in your pajamas, you know. <laughs> you don't have to dress up. You don't have to think about how you look on camera. Um, but also, because there's no cameras, I can do it all by myself. Okay. You know, and I don't need anybody else to be a part of it. It can just be me and the person. You can forget that you have a microphone. And um, so, yeah, and... So far, I've done five episodes. I'm about to release the fifth any day now. Mm, exciting news. Yeah, and it's, um, you know, it's getting better. I'm getting better. But also, like, the, the quality of the conversations are really improving, you know. Okay. And I feel like as also, like, when you, when you begin something like this in the beginning, it's hard to get people who want to talk to you. How did it all start? Well, <laughs> you know, like the first guest of mine was um, her husband was helping me, like teaching me with the recording. So that was mm -hmm. the first. So he was, we were literally together, all three of us, and he was showing me how to set it up and everything. And then we edited it together. Um, and then, yeah, I've just been, you know, people that in my community that I find really inspiring okay. to talk to. Um, and some of them I've chased for months, you know, like I thought like, oh, it would be so easy. I'll just start this podcast and everybody's going to line up to talk to me. <laughs> you know, people have shit to do. Like people are busy. So sometimes it takes like a month to get somebody to find two hours to sit down, you know, and talk. And, and um, but the most beautiful part is I'm, I've made such really like profound connections with the people that I've interviewed as well and like developed really good friendships out of them and. Um, that feels really, really nice. And um, I guess my hope is in a way too that the people who listen, if they 
if I am able to introduce them to somebody who could help them on their journey in some way. So, um, you know, give them like a sense of trust to go to that person for what their special speciality is, whether it's teaching yoga or being a physiotherapist mm -hmm. or a photographer or a life coach or an artist, you know, in every way, like, oh, actually, like, this is what I need in my life right now. I can actually contact this person. They're not living over in America. They're here, <laughs> you know. Just let's remind our listeners that you're here in Marbella, mm -hmm. Spain. Mm -hmm. And from my, what I understand, um, you're creating a safe space for people to tell the stories, their inspirational stories about their journeys into spirituality. And I think a big component of the healing power of the feminine is through storytelling. Mm, absolutely. You know? Like when you mm -hmm. see this like masculine history, it's like dates and numbers and <laughs> short statistics and bullet points, you know, this happened, this guy died, this guy, you know, conquered. And women's stories, it's all about the relationships and all about like the feelings we had and the little details, you know. And I think that that's, um, we as adults stop listening to stories and we're so busy trying to get to you know the finish line yeah or the next thing and like oh yeah i'm listening honey i'm listening you know and it's the worst feeling in the world when you want somebody to hear you and they're not able to um so yeah like being a good listener but also helping people you know and it's so cool with the podcast because people can be walking their dog and listening or they can be doing the dishes or they can be at the gym working out like I've had people mm -hmm. tell me that they do that too to my podcast and it's so funny because when you're recording you're aware that people are going to listen from all over the world <laughs> you know and be doing things because it's not like they'll be sitting at home on the sofa watching you they, they'll be you know you'll be a voice inside of their head box and mm. like that to me is really really beautiful I was wondering what kind of challenges have you faced so far from the beginning of the idea oh I want to interview inspirational people to the actual manifestation of this tangible idea that is now available for listeners all over the world yeah, say challenges and I'll say opportunities for oh. improvement um, <laughs> I love it <laughs> um, and you know like you learn so much but like even just things like the, finding the right microphone you <laughs> okay. know learning the equipment like I'm not necessarily the most technically advanced person in the world mm -hmm. like I'm very creative but to learn like how to do the editing and stuff for me I don't have like a very mathematical brain so that was that was intense, but also beautiful because now I have this new tool to be creative with, you know, uh -huh. like just like I had to learn how to shade when I was a kid and using, you know, like light and dark and shadowing around an apple for three hours to learn how to move the hand correctly. This is another tool, you know, so it's also like very profound. Um, it's also been beautiful to to learn about listening beautiful art yeah that's that's one thing and then also like the the gentle guidance in conversation you know and also to like ask the right questions and I think when people tell you their story not to interject like your opinion on it you know but just allow the person to finish speaking um and and then, you know, like, guide a little bit and go a little bit deeper without uh, offending people. Like, mm -hmm. I've never offended anybody, but, like, finding that balance of yeah. where do I take over, how much should I speak. Um, I, have, I have issues with taking up too much space. <laughs> so... You know, like, I'll often when I do the edits, I'll cut out. I'm like, oh, my God, I was talking for two minutes. Just take that out. It's about this person. Okay. And then a lot of my listeners are saying, like, they would like to hear more from me. Interesting. You know. And that now everybody's saying, like, when are you going to do a podcast about your story? And I'm like, that's weird. What am I going to do? Like, talk to myself in a room for an hour? Well, I'm happy we have <laughs> you here. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be on the on the other end, you know. <laughs> And I don't know if it makes me a better guest or a worse one, knowing, like, you know, the process. But mm. it's, um, yeah, and I think, like, a big challenge as well is getting people to listen. Okay. 
How do you address that? What what's, what are I your... just tell everybody all the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, a everybody person, I meet, like, where person it's appropriate, person. I'm like, hey, you know, I have a podcast. It's wicked. You should check it out. God. And, <laughs> um, you know, because in the metrics and stuff, like, now I'm listed on iTunes and in all these places. And if people do a search for yoga and spirituality or for, you know, whatever, then you want to come up fairly high up in the in the ratings right because otherwise mm -hmm. they have to scroll and then like because there's one billion podcasts today one one billion, billion. podcasts yeah did it's i amazing. hear that right it's amazing it's a minefield i mean like i don't know how many of them are active i don't know how many of them are worth listening to mm. but um i think it's great you know um but then you know like there's an element of yes i want people to find me because you know I feel that these these conversations are really inspirational and I'm proud of them and I want people to hear them. Good work with it, you know. Mm. So so that's but it's 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 nice too because it's something that's freely available and people can mm -hmm. do it in their own time. They don't even have to leave their sofa, you know, it's it's there. It's not like a class. You must attend no, from nine to ten no, on Mondays. And you don't have to pay anything. Mm -hmm. It's literally it's just something that's there and, and it's I I feel like my entrepreneurial self loves doing something that has absolutely doesn't require, like it doesn't demand anything from the person. Okay. It's just listen, you know, this is worth listening to. Um, yeah. Could you please set us a little bit on the timeline? When did you start mm. recording, interviewing? Mm. Yeah, well, a few months ago. I haven't been doing it for that long. I think I did the first one in June, July. June, July but 2019? It, yeah, and then it took ages because then I ordered a microphone and I got the wrong one. I had to send it back and, then, you know, and it <laughs> took like a month to get microphone sorted. So I like went off to this, like I had the idea and then within five days I had the first recording done, you know. Okay. So it was like, boom. And, and it was one of those things, like, when the idea, when these kind of creative ideas come, because um, they come to me, like, all the time, you know, and it's like, whoa, I could do, like, 5,000 businesses today, whoa, which is great. But then it's the actual, like, bringing it into reality. Like, that's a lot of work. So I also have to be very mindful of what is worth my time. Absolutely. What do I actually want to see through? And what's just a nice, like, fantasy, you know, about having fun one day when you're just, you know, mind fucking yourself, but to actually like put it into reality. So I asked some people for help and everybody was like right away, like helping me. And I got all the support and I was like, okay, I know this is good because the universe is just saying, yes, <laughs> go for it. That's it. And like, I'm here, I'll do this. I can, you know, I even had somebody offer to do all the editing for me. Okay. And I was like, oh, that could be great. And then I realized, like, no, how would that work? Like, how would he know I wanted to cut? Like, no, 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 I have to learn it by myself. So I had somebody then who offered to teach me how to do it all. Mm. But then, yeah, like with the microphones and everything. And then, but it's funny because these kind of, when it's about waiting for time, like something has to arrive or something didn't go well, I realized like it had to be that way because I had to generate enough. I had to go around and talk to people and like say it to enough people that people actually wanted to start booking to be on the show, oh. you know? So meanwhile, because if I would have had my microphone and been like, okay, I'm ready, 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 then there was nobody there. So it took a while, you know, and I think it's Create a little bit of expectation perhaps. Yeah, because if you're mystery. only working like with yourself and it's just you and a paintbrush or you and a pen or you and a guitar, mm. then it's just your energy. But when there's other people's energy involved and you want other people to co-create with you, then time is, is a different issue because <laughs> it's not just about when you want to do it. It's about fitting it into other people's timelines. The perfect timing. Yeah. And... Looking, I don't know, looking forward six months into the future, a year into the future, where do you see this project or other projects that you may have in mind? Well, so like, for example, I've had some so like qualms about because now I'm going to India soon. Okay. And I have some people over there that I would love to do a podcast with. And then I'm like, shit, but I said it's only from Marbella. You know, so then can I, do I have to start a new podcast for people who are not in Marbella? Oh. So that like put me a little bit like, what is the future in this sense? You know, because mm -hmm. 
if I meet somebody and it's like, oh, you don't live in Marbella, you can't be on the show. <laughs> okay. You know. Is it a prerequisite to be Well, because the idea was originally that I wanted it to be like regional, okay. you know, like a grassroots thing. So it's not, like I said before, it's not people from far away from where you live. But saying all of that, the realization has been, I have people tuning in from Mexico. I have people listening in France. I have people listening, you know, in Sweden, like in India. So <laughs> the audience, like once you put it on the internet. It's a global audience. Right away, you know. And that's what I love about it too, that it's something that people that love me and that are connected to me can be a part of what I'm doing, even though they're not here. So, um, that's one part where I see it like, oops, maybe I shouldn't define myself to, you know, one, one place. Um, but I would like to, I would like to try to publish at least one podcast a month, preferably two. Okay. And I would like to keep going and I would, um, I'm stuck because I'm still working on the branding. Mm -hmm. So like I have a website, I have a, a Instagram and a Facebook page and all of that, but like the logo and how I want to promote it. The is, image. Yeah. It's still a little bit stuck. So that's Working something. progress. Yeah. Okay. But I also feel like there's an element of numbers, you know, like you're not allowed to be listed on iTunes until you have three episodes. Okay. So, like, you can't really reach a bigger audience until you can be listed on the big podcast apps. Unless mm -hmm. you have a website and people you want to funnel through there. If you want random people to be able to find you, you need to be on these other uh, devices or applications or whatever they're called. Um, so, like, I had to have three episodes for that. And then now, like, I've published my fourth and now, you know, it's, it's the people are starting to find it through other places. And when they, when then they like, or they comment or whatever, it goes up and then more people will find it. And then also like, you know, the best way to support a podcast is to share it with a friend or send it along. So that's happening now too. We're going to say that again. What's the best way to support a podcast? Share it. Share it. Share <laughs> it. Send it to everyone you know. Send it to everybody that you think would be inspired. You please, know. please do. And it's so nice too because, again, like it's it's not a video. It's something people can listen to. And it's it's just, I think, because we have a lot of, all of us have a lot of negative voices in our heads. So to fill some of that space up with positivity, I think is 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 really good. But yeah, and then I I just I would like to have more um, more inspirational people come across my path, you know, and mm. have opportunities to connect with more people. But obviously, you know, if you want to talk about like specific uh, objectives, like it would be nice to keep growing my audience, you know, okay. and reach more people. Um, like the other day I had had like one of the podcasts that had 300 people listen to it. 300. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not like 3 million, like it would be if I was in America. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but like it's one hour. So that's 300 hours of people continually listening to this one conversation. And I was thinking like, that's like powerful. That's 14 days. <laughs> non-stop being this one person talking you know like so in that way like I just find it like it's amazing like uh -huh. you, you do something like that and I guess like when I went to university I studied my first degree was in public relations and um and communications mass communications there was a lot of writing and nobody reads your writing you know like no, not when you're doing stuff like that but then I had like all these people in my university who were doing more creative arts, photography, dancing. So when they do their like end of year project, everybody wants to watch it. Like if you're a videographer, people can watch your video. Like it's cool and fun, you know. And I never really had one of those things. So I think like it's really nice to be able to create something that people can enjoy. You know, and they don't have to like sit and like sludge through like a 50 page like academic paper because <laughs> your friends don't want to see that. Like, even Just for the record, Maya does have a few very interesting works out there if you want to read them. <laughs> well, if you're a yoga teacher or if you're curious to become a yoga teacher, I have a paper that you can find for free online as my master's thesis. It's called The Pedagogy of Enlightenment the art of the modern yoga teacher and it's really um like a roadmap 
to what it means to be a yoga teacher in the 21st century and um, mm. everything from like how to relate to money and the body and uh, making you know um, like a career out of yoga so yeah spirituality doesn't have to be connected with a god it could be polytheistic anything like that spirituality really just comes down to the self in my eyes el estar contigo mismo intentando mm, aclarar tu tu mente conexiones emocionales ahí me voy a quedar <laughs> Bueno, espiritualidad para mí es un término eh, un poco difícil de explicar todavía porque realmente jamás, o por así decirlo, nunca había querido reflexionar sobre el tema. Siempre me había como encerrado a pensar que son cosas como cuentos de musas ¿no? o algo así como de mitología. Spirituality. Doesn't exist. Pero, en fin he podido comprobar que al final la espiritualidad es como también dar un sentido diferente a lo que es la vida tangible, ¿no? O sea, hay veces que pienso que es como una realidad paralela que no sabrías cómo eh, ubicarla, definirla, incluso demostrar de su existencia, pero sin embargo es como también una puerta hacia el alivio, pienso yo. Es eso, como un escape de también relacionado como una inspiración un escape de, de esta sociedad o de las imágenes que ahora mismo me envuelven en, en un mundo real, por así decirlo. It's a bit tricky as a Japanese because spirituality is pretty much the things which really base of our culture, but the term of spirituality in Western country is a bit more dividing from um, ritual sense of spirituality so they think it's a bit more like associated with fantasy or something which is quite confusing sometimes for me and what is it for you it's i don't know i feel distance from that word in the sense because it's kind of things that i explain about my culture but the way they describe or use in their way is quite different. So if Japanese terms of spirituality is about life for me, but it doesn't necessity to be have a fantasy, more kind of close to the senses. Con mucha paz, ¿no? Esa palabra me, me da mucha paz. I'm just going to go back to to the project of Light on Living mm -hmm. and I would like to hear what kind of advice did you receive throughout this journey that actually uh, pushed you, supported you to move forward into, you know, bringing down to earth your idea? Hmm. Well, I have this like one part of me inside because I've had quite a colorful life and I've overcome a lot of challenges. So there's this one sense in me that like, oh, if I want something, I'll do it. Like, you know, and then there's another part of me that's also because I've had a colorful life knows that the process from idea into manifestation is going to be way more than what you ever imagine. Okay. You know. Because it's the the bringing it into reality, like it it takes time and work and skill and dedication and, and mm. you know persistence, compromise. And, yeah, and also like even a sense of momentum, right? Like you have to keep focus on the vision, so that no matter what comes along, you're not focused on the obstacle. Because once you're obstacle focused, or once you're problem focused you don't find answers, you know? So like that, like I'm a chuf chuf train. And if there's something on the track, like either we just go fucking through it or, you know, we go around it, but we, we try to just, or maybe like water, <laughs> just find, find the way through, but know where you're going. Um, and I think any creative project, there's a, a, a period where you're like, am I completely insane? Why am I doing this? You know, nobody cares this is silly like and those are the moments that really like inspire your work 
okay. you know, because that's where you find like, is this what I want to do? You know, and if you can get through that process, you're gold, you know, you're on the way. Um, I've had also like amazing support from people around me, like primarily from my husband, who's, you know, not surprised by any of my crazy ideas, but, <laughs> um, you know, he was great, like helping me as well, because there was one point where the microphones didn't work and I was super depressed about it. And I was like, I think the universe is just saying, don't do it. And he was just like, okay, let's go on Amazon. We're going to look for microphones. We're going to get this kind. I'll figure it out. Um, like he worked when he was younger, like in a shop that sold like audio stuff. So it actually turns out that he knows quite a lot. So oh. suddenly, you know, like something that he did randomly for some years, like turned out to be like great help for, for my project. So Good combination of skills then. <laughs> yeah. And then, like I said, like people offering to help me with the editing and teach me how to do it. And um, I also have a friend who like is the most critical person ever. So she just rips everything I do to pieces you know like everything I do like she just gives all the worst criticism and is it constructive though yeah okay yeah and I mean like some of it I'm just like no you're wrong I don't agree like I like it the way it is you know and other times I'm just like oh yeah you know but I think like that person is really important to have so that like you're not just surrounded by people who are going like, oh it's amazing oh it's so good because it doesn't resonate true with you because you know that there's always so to have those people and to allow them to be there, you know, and not get disheartened by them because you'll get so much positive feedback too. But if you only get positive feedback, you won't improve, mm. you know? And I think it's important to like not get disheartened by people when they give you like all the negativity, like everything that is not, you know, good enough or what you can do better. And even if like that person sounds mean to you, you know, because she, if she didn't give a shit at all, she wouldn't be listening. You know what I mean? So she's taking the time to give me that feedback. And it takes, I think it takes strength to, to withstand that kind of storm. But that's what, like, if you did any kind of creative work at, at school, like if you did art in school, you'd had a teacher that was on you, you know. And it's the only way to get better is having those people really, like, look through the needle's eye and say, nah, that bit is, like, not working out. You need to change that, you know. And, and, and to not um, hold back, mm -hmm. you know. And then it's up to you to filter just like with everything else. But if you're only wanting people to give you validation and approval, I don't feel that you're going to improve as a, as a person or as, a, as an artist or a creator or as an entrepreneur, you know. And you have to listen to your customers. I mean, for the podcast, like a lot of people tell me like, oh, really, like an hour? That's so much time. And I'm like, well, if you're not somebody who values this for an hour, then you're not my my target audience. That's all right. You know, um, Joe Rogan has a podcast and sometimes they're three and a half hours and his is the most popular podcast out there. So I felt like, well, if you think it's too long, then let me make it so interesting that I keep you captivated. Mm. You know, so like it's it's that kind of thing where like people will give you an opinion and you have to really go, this is great because I hear you. And I agree. Or actually, I hear you, but I like my way better and I stick okay. to it, you know. But I think it's important to let that criticism in mm -hmm. and Embrace reflect it. on it. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. And see where they're coming from because, you know, if somebody's, like an example, right? Like if, if an obese person is giving you dietary advice, you might not feel compelled to listen to them. But if somebody is really in shape and they're telling you something, maybe you should listen to them. So like also think about who is speaking and, and, you know, what they're saying and, and what you want to do with it. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I think it's really important to have those people, as well as people to support you, to have people who support you in a critical way, you know, because I think those people are the ones that want to see you succeed most of all, you know. Mm. Mm. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um I was thinking perhaps you had like a word or two of advice for for the community of women and people out there, but especially women who may be going through a similar situation, who maybe want to be also inspired and empowered to 
bring down to earth whatever idea they have and and perhaps you have some word of advice for them well i think what i feel like saying now has to do with the message and that very often as women we're so focused on how people will receive our message that we forget about who's sending the message you know and for a lot of women there's this like programming that we have to be perfect you know oh if I lose 10 pounds or I have to wear makeup or I have to come across as like someone who's really got it together and I can't put it out there until it's perfect and like mm. you know um whereas I think what people really connect to is the human in you you know the flawed like it's not it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to be perfect that's what makes you interesting you know and to not hold back for that reason but to like allow yourself to be a real person who's doing real good stuff and the allow best you know how the messenger and the message you know and let them be like a whole unit um so that you don't hold back from being your real self but you also don't forget to include yourself in the message um and not just focus on how it's going to be received by other people yeah but do what what comes from you you know mm. thank you we're just gonna jump ahead to a few flash questions so if you could pick a guru or a human influence uh, in your life who would that be oh my God, um, yeah, God, <laughs> my God in the most manifest form is my husband, um, who's one of my greatest teachers, my best friend, um, but he's helped me see so many things about myself and I love that realization because in yoga I always thought for many years that the idea was to find like equality like I'm going to make my body equal like the left side and the right side are going to feel the same and be the same and like oh the left side is not as strong it's weaker you know and um I want to have this perfectly symmetrical self and now the realization with my husband has been no the more I appreciate the difference the you know if you if you're doing ballet and you're standing on your tippy toes your balance is not so great but if you really spread your feet apart and you take a lot of grounding then your feminine is fully in its feminine the masculine is fully in its masculine so that experience with another person and sharing that you know there's this quote um, it's the the space between the pillars that hold up the temple and I feel like that's been a realization with my husband of that love you but I'm still me and I love you because you're not me you know and in that in those differences that I find myself yeah so he's teaching me a lot about his way of being and through that I'm learning about my way of being and it's mm. it's beautiful mm. what about a favorite book Maya or an inspirational one for that you know I'm going to say a weird one please so there's this fantasy novel where it's called Paxinarian okay and it's by Elizabeth Moon and that book is about is it with dragons and the whole thing you know dwarfs <laughs> and all of it but it's about a girl who runs away from home to join the army okay And she's like, just turns out, you know, she's got these superpowers and she's killing all the dragons and the demons. And yeah, that that book was very, very good influence for me when I was a kid. Yeah. What about your your safe place, your temple, where where you go to um, reconnect and heal? Well, yeah, that's an interesting question too because, I mean, I have like geographical places. Mm -hmm. like now I'm going to India soon and I definitely have some spaces in Goa where I really feel like... <sighs> but really, it's an inner space. Like I left a few years ago. I stopped 
doing these spiritual practices to get away from the constraints of the body, you know, and looking for spirit outside. And now it's uh, finding that connection to spirit, like deeper in, going deeper in the body. So it doesn't matter necessarily like where I am, but being able to, to, to connect to that, whether I'm in an airport or whether I'm driving or whether I'm sitting in nature. Um, so I feel like that's an inner, inner space, yeah. And it's been a lot of work around making my body feel like a safe space, like developing boundaries and learning how to connect to what's my energy. Mm. I absorb a lot. Um, so being able to like come back home for me and um, maybe that's developed over the years of traveling so much and never really having like one location that felt like, oh, this is it, you know. Um, so yeah, it's inside for sure. Mm. Lovely. Well, I would really like to thank you for your time, uh, your words, your energy, and everything that you've shared with us. Thank you. Thank you. Just as a reminder, um, there's a podcast by Maya. That's called Light on Living. And please, please, please check that out. And we hope to have you around soon. Thank you. Y recuerda, inspira, estamos vivas. Expira, suelta todo aquello que ya no necesitas. Inspira es el podcast de Craft. Tejemos conciencia sobre artistas y facilitadoras culturales contemporáneas. Compartimos contigo sus proyectos actuales y futuros. Inspira es un lugar sagrado para empoderar a la tribu femenina, a mujeres como tú, como yo, como nosotras. <risa>